The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. We got some volatility in the markets, folks. We got ADP private payrolls out. We added jobs, but only about 167,000, I believe. You know what? Let's jump right over to the number because private payrolls, uh, the headline is much worse than expected. We get non-farm payrolls about 48 hours from right now, Friday, 8.30 a.m. I'll be on the I air live for that. And there it is. Yes, increased by just 167,000 jobs in July, well below the estimate of a million and represents a tumble from the 4.3 million added in June. So we add back 4.3 million in June and we only add 167,000 in July. Things just stop as we have some hot spots, whether it's Florida, Texas, right, California, um, and now some other states as we have hit some of the peaks in some of those hardest hit areas. But nonetheless, so that hitting the markets, a little bit of context on where we've been. We reach a high of 33.21. As of about a.m., 8 a.m., you sell off a bit on the payrolls number. You reach a low in the S&Ps at 33.10. I say low, low in the volatility that we had in the last couple hours. But right now, we're back up about 17 points in the S&Ps, 33.16. Pretty remarkable how close we are to those all-time highs now in the S&P. I mean, talk about a rocket ship, folks. We've had some volatility from the highs in early June of 32.27. We sold off in an instant, but since then, and really, we've maintained this trend line. I mean, even, you know, it doesn't take a, a master chartist to see the kind of trend we have and the S&P holding steady on that trend, 33.17 within about 80 points of that all-time high. NASDAQ up 20 points, 11,103 right now. We hit a high of 11,144, putting this on a 15 minute. You see the highs made at about 6 a.m. A little bit of a sell off as well, 745 and 8 in the morning, just above 11,100. The Dow up 188 points, 26,906. For some context in the Dow, almost made it to 30,000 before that dramatic sell off. Pretty remarkable that we got. 11,500 Dow points you sold off. And I think this bar, let me see, I think this bar is going to show us. There it is. I had the bar going back. When we were down here and the lows of March in the Dow, you had essentially traded back to a price level of December of 2014. The high in December of 2014, 8,000, 18,051. We came within 35 Dow points of that level in March and currently about 27,000. The high is about 2,600 points higher. All right, we got to jump to gold. Why not keep it on this chart for a while before we jump away? Gold on a monthly basis. Uh, dramatically charging higher in a big way. Look at these bars on a monthly basis. The month of July, we go from 1766 to 2005, and already today, quite the acceleration in the last 48 hours. Early Tuesday, gold contracts trading at 1982. We charge up almost $80, 80 to a high of 2060 and 20 cents overnight. We're backed off a bit, 2052 for the price of that gold contract. Silver up almost a dollar right now, 26.99 for the price of that silver contract and jumping around to that note market, 10 year note off a bit, off about six ticks right now at 140.05. Still that 10 year well above the area that we had consolidated for a while. We're now above that area, just inching towards the 140.24 high back in March. That 10 year yield, uh, just about five tenths percent, pretty much a half a percent. Remarkable. All right, we got to get into Disney. Disney earnings after the bell last night, looking to open to the tune of almost $8 higher. Quite the pop on their numbers. So you initially dip lower down to 113.36. And just like that, the conference call began last night at 5, excuse me, 4.30. Uh, starts off relatively calmly. There's 4.30. These are five-minute bars. 
there's 435, there's 440, and the 445 bar comes around, and they announced that they are launching a new streaming service under the Star brand that they acquired from Fox. They also announced that Mulan, which had been pushed back multiple times for theatrical release, Mulan gonna be made available on a pay-per-view basis within Disney Plus for about $29, $29.99, I think it is. So they're gonna have premium movies within Disney Plus, maybe the ones that ordinarily would be those blockbusters, and they they call this a one-off though, right? They can't release this movie right now. It's supposed to be an epic movie. I think it cost them a couple hundred million dollars maybe to make, and they're saying, hey, you know what? We can't push this back for a year or two. We're gonna have other movies that we wanna release in a year or two. We're gonna release this a one-off. We're gonna test the waters. Maybe we'll get some more subscriptions with the ability to collect the $29 from current subscribers. Uh, so nonetheless, and the streaming service, launching a new streaming service entirely, uh, boom, like a rocket ship, the market takes off from about 122, no, excuse me, 118, so we're trading almost even as in we close out the session at 117 and change, we get some volatility, they announce that service, and Disney like a ro rocket ship takes off, now this morning, We've got some upgrades for Disney across the board as well. We're up almost $8 at $125.01 for Disney. Putting things in some context on where Disney has been. Disney, the highs of June, we're not even back up to there yet. 127 and change, basically. We were as high as 153.41 pre-COVID, $79.00 the low in Disney, and getting into the raw point of their numbers. As we got it up, there it is. So there's a lot going on here. They also announced 100 million paid subscribers. Now, the market did not accelerate higher on that number. That was not what did it. And that's why, listening to the earnings call, it was when they announced the completely new streaming service uh, under the Star brand. So they're gonna have an entirely new streaming service, and they're also gonna release that Mulan movie, direct to consumers. They're gonna have another investor day in a couple months where they talk about how they're gonna accelerate things into Disney Plus. But when you add up Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN, they're now at 100 million paid subscribers. Disney Plus alone, as of Monday of this week, 60 million subscribers. Originally, their estimate was between 60 million and 90 million subscribers by the year 2024. They did it within one year of launching. They launched November last year. By August, you have 60 million subscribers. Pretty remarkable. When you look at that and the market likes it, they actually made eight cents a share. The market was looking for 64 cent loss. That's on an adjusted basis because they had some big charges in here. They had an adjusted basis of, excuse me, Disney reported a net loss for the quarter of 4.72 billion due in large part to charges related to its earlier acquisition of 21st Century Fox, including severance and contract termination costs and integration expenses. So there it is, $29.99 beginning September 4th. Uh, revenue they missed, $11.78 billion versus $12.37, but did post that profit on an adjusted basis. So Disney shares right at around $125 this morning. What else we got going on in terms of earnings? Win out with their numbers, putting it on a short-term basis. You see the volatility last night to 71, up to 74. We'll get into those numbers a bit and what else we have on tap for trading this morning. Checking out the VIX. As this market shrugs off that private payrolls number, S&P's positive by 15, 16, the VIX at 2331. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by 19 points, 33.18, popping right back to almost the session highs we had before a little bit of a sell-off on those private payroll numbers. Jumping into other companies with earnings beyond meat with their numbers last night, not quite what the market was looking for. You go from 146, basically, on the spike high. We close at 142. We spike up to almost 146, and then quite the sell-off down below 128 at one point. We're currently down about $10 from the close yesterday at 132.7. In Beyond Meat, and to see what they had to say, Beyond Meat. So, grocery sales nearly triple, offsetting restaurant losses. Grocery sales soared almost 200% during the quarter ended June 30th, but food service sales slid as restaurants, universities, office buildings temporarily shuttered. Company did not reissue an outlook. And they came in at net loss 16 cents, revenue 113 million. Beyond reported second quarter net loss of $10 million or 16 cents a share, wider than the loss they were looking for 9.4 or 24 cents per share a year earlier, excluding costs related. The company lost two cents a share. Uh, nonetheless, the stock, I mean, it's been quite a run it's had, even at 132, graphically, you're talking about right here, quite a consolidation maybe between about 120 up to 140 and change, spike to 160. Still pre-COVID, we're at about 120 on this stock. Okay, Moderna out with their numbers. Second quarter revenue jumps fivefold on coronavirus vaccine development. Revenue jumped to 66 million from Moderna during the quarter, more than five times the 13 million it took in during the same period last year, higher than the 27 million projected by analysts. Quite a number. MRNA is their symbol, and we are actually lower though. There's your volatility, quite the expectation. Conference call beginning at 8 a.m., currently trading at 76.60, came in at 78.46. Company narrowed its second quarter loss to 116 million from 134 million. Uh, they say they're up more than 1%. They got to update that article because that ain't true no more. We were a size 82. You spiked to 74 right as the conference call uh, comes to begin about 45 minutes ago. I assume they will have some volatility today as they have been one of the more volatile stocks from $20, $30 up to 95. We're gonna open about 76. 
from Moderna shares. Well, and there we go. We get more Moderna news as they're on their conference call right now. Vaccine at 32 to $37 per dose for some customers. You're going to see some volatility as that conference call progresses. CVS out with their numbers as well. Jump as the retailer raises the 2020 forecast. Strong quarterly results. Adjusted earnings per share will be in the range of 714 to 727. Getting into their numbers. Fiscal second quarter net income, almost $3 billion or 226 a share, up from almost $2 billion a year earlier. Not bad, excluding items. They are in 264 share, higher than the 193 the market was looking for. Revenue up 3% to $65 billion from 63.43. Market was looking for 64 billion. 0.23, so they took in more than a billion extra dollars the market was looking for. CVS shares, there's your daily. We're going to open higher this morning. We're at 65 yesterday on the close, and we're currently trading at about 67, spiked as high as 70, 76 at one point in CVS shares. Mortgage rates, a new record low, 3.14% for the average fixed 30-year mortgage. Mortgage applications to purchase a home also fell for the week down 2%, but 22% higher from one year ago. Pretty remarkable how these interest rates, I covered at the top of the program, the 10-year actually pulling back a bit for the first time in a while, 140.04. Still, when you look at things in this context, folks, context 139.22 was basically the higher range going all the way back to the spike high from march we hit that high starting first in april we hit it again late april we hit it again in may we came up to this level late late june all through month of july and we are dramatically above that even on the pullback today off seven ticks at 140.03 you can see the trend and it is upwards with lower rates coming at us all right, I'm sure we all saw the explosion in Beirut. Pretty remarkable uh, visual explosion and the, the carnage done over there. Keep some white light and some prayers over to the people in Beirut because that is a uh, catastrophe of epic proportions going on there. Um, and it's unfortunate, reports coming out, that maybe there's been a, is it ammonium nitrate stored there since like 2014. Yeah, 20, 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate had been present for six years in a warehouse that they were storing there that they confiscated originally in 2014 when it was coming in through a port. Not the stuff you want to see, folks. Huge loss of life and uh, unfortunate. So keep them in your thoughts uh, today. All right, what else we got going on? So just as we're coming on the air, you have President Trump. Uh, I believe he was out on Fox News, and he is talking about, quote-unquote, a big number coming out Friday on jobs. Uh, we live in a new normal time, folks. Uh, whether you think that is good or bad, pretty hard to deny that this is a new normal going on, that you have the president uh, leading economic indicator numbers that are expected in 48 hours. Uh, but guess what? It's happened before, and pay attention. So... We just got private payrolls. Maybe part of the reason why the market just shakes off private payrolls is you have the president out there uh, already cheerleading a jobs number on Friday that we don't get for 48 hours. But nonetheless, in June 2018, he tweeted an hour before it, looking forward to seeing the number. Um, and it was a crush to the upside. And we'll see what happens. Let's see. the uh, They're looking for 1.264 million jobs in July. I wonder how that changes with the private payroll number missing this morning in a big way. But nonetheless, factor that into what is going on. All right, some of the tech stocks, quite a run they've had. Apple finally getting a little bit of a downgrade from Bank of America. As we jump into stocks making moves, you go up to the top here. Bank of America downgraded Apple to neutral from buy. And, and, and help me understand this one. While raising its price target on the stock to 470 from 420. I like that. Why not, right? Uh, it's pretty great when the only time you get a downgrade, it's accompanied by a price target raise. Not bad. Uh, the firm said there are many positives for Apple, but risks as well. Risks as well, and the risk reward is balanced at current price levels. I mean, basically, what they're saying is, listen, they're going to do really well. But doing really well is already priced into this stock. We're trading at 436. We reached two. 12 was the low, so you're more than 100%. You've doubled the stock since the lows. Even pre-COVID, you were at 325. You're up $110, you're up 33% from the highs pre-COVID, uh, let alone this year. Some of these tech stocks, Microsoft, quite the acceleration as well. We're gonna open 
about 213 from Microsoft. Got to take a look at Amazon shares. Going to open basically flat at 3136 for Amazon. Netflix has had quite the run up, right? You go from 252 less than a year ago. Your COVID low is just below 300, and we're sitting this morning at about 509 for Netflix shares. The the acceleration in Disney does not seem to be getting in the way of Netflix shares. And we'll jump back to Disney as Disney right now, sitting at about 124.60 for that stock as it looks to open uh, higher on their earnings. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll come back, see what else we have on tap. We'll go over other earnings after the bell tonight. S&P is positive by 16. You get the NASDAQ positive by just five right now. And the Dow, Dow almost leading the way up almost 200 points right now. Stay tuned, folks. Be right back in three minutes. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006. And like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of tfnn.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We just had the NASDAQ futures inch into negative territory for a brief moment. We've sold off about 60 points from the highs we had overnight. Highs overnight, 11,140. You're currently trading at 11,086. The Dow up 190 points, 26,905. S&P is holding on to about 15 points of gains. Jumping around to other equities with action so far today. So we covered Apple, we covered CVS, Disney for sure, Beyond Meat as well. Weight Watchers out with their numbers. Excuse me. 
Uh, lower than expected profit and revenue for the second quarter hit by a pandemic-related halt. The company, formerly known as Weight Watchers, did offset part of that drop through its digital offerings. Weight Watchers, quite the drop they had last night on their earnings from $26.50 down to $23.50. Currently trading about $2 lower from last night at $24.50 for Weight Watchers. Novavax reported positive results in an early study of a vaccine candidate, saying it produced promising immune responses as well as tolerated by patients. NVAX is their symbol, I believe. There it is. So last night from 103 to 198. How about that one, folks? Talk about some volatility on that stock. Pretty remarkable. Uh, you're going to be trading that? You better be trading some options. And even if you're trading options, watch out, folks. Uh, Blackstone out with their numbers, a deal in place, excuse me, a, now their numbers. Yeah, they're going to buy Ancestry.com for almost $5 billion. I've used Ancestry. I got my genetics there. Uh, go figure. I'm Irish in a big way, along with my dad. There you go. Uh, Ancestry, $4.7 billion, quite a price tag, but they got, uh, they believe it's worth uh, what they're going to pay for it. And Win Win lost 614 a share, wider than 498. The casino operator's revenue also short of forecast. We'll jump over to Win. There's your Win action, the 7394. And the other thing I was going to cover, Exxon Mobil. They're not even going to match 401k contributions for employees anymore, beginning in October. Be wary, folks. Uh, you're trading higher this morning, but that's pretty dicey. You work for a big oil company, you can't even get a 401k match. Stay tuned. We got our man Larry Pesavento coming up live next for this market open. We'll be right back, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned.